I have read your comments and heard your words. And honestly, I admit, I done messed up. In my Sonic Games That Need Remasters slash Remix video, a lot of people took notice of the fact that I didn't mention anything in regards to the Sonic games on handhelds. That of the many adventures that our beloved Hedgehog has had that I believe deserved another shot slash chance of making themselves known once more, none of it included any portable entries in the franchise. I simply ignored them. You don't up now. <laughs> Let's fix that with this video, shall we? Hey everyone, I am Blue Stride and welcome back to another video. Today we're taking another look at the long line of Sonic releases that need the remake slash remaster treatment, but this time focusing on the ones that can fit in the palm of your hand. Oh, at least most hands. I don't know, mine's are pretty small. But before we get into which games I believe deserve a comeback the most, and what are the likelihoods of them actually having said comeback, Make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell and become a fellow Strider or Stridette. I'm still a small up and coming Sonic tuber focusing on all things Sonic slash Sega and any support would be greatly appreciated. First off, let me just say, holy sh** does Sonic have a lot of handheld games. Like I knew it was quite the number but god damn I wasn't ready for 40 games when starting this. With such a quote unquote small number, one would have to ask where exactly do we start? The very beginning with Sega Game Gear? The Neo Geo Pocket? Well, to save this video from being way too long for my own sanity to edit, let's just begin our journey at the Game Boy Advance, particularly for two reasons. One, the majority of the Sonic games that released on the Game Gear were watered down versions slash demakes of actual console titles such as Sonic 1 and 2, Mean Bean Machine, Sonic Spinball, and Sonic Blast. Plus, let's be frank here, most of them just kind of went that good, like at all. Apologies to all 12 people clamoring for a Sonic Chaos remake. You can have my head on a silver platter decorated with red rings later. But I'm not going to spend 5 minutes talking about why games like Sonic Labyrinth need a remaster. Because it doesn't. Seriously, why do they think taking away the one thing that makes Sonic Sonic, his signature speed by the way, was a good idea? That would make the blue blue what? The blue walker? The blue average? The blue moving at a reasonable pace? Whatever it makes him, it's dumb. This game is dumb. I'm done for playing it, and I want my goddamn time back. So with that out of the way, Striders and Stridettes, to the Game Boy Advance we go! Oh geez Louise Eggman Daddy please, the memories. The nostalgia alone that this game holds for countless people should make it worthy of a remaster slash remake in and of itself, and yet most of the memories I have of this style of Sonic aren't even from this game series, but of the many Flash games that spawned from it. If you have never played Ultimate Sonic Flash or Sonic RPG growing up in the early 2000s, I can't trust the fact that you had a childhood as a Sonic fan. Maybe not even trust you as an overall person, I don't know. Those were some games, but this was THE game, or games plural, that made them. Dimp's first of what would be a long history with developing games for the beloved Hedgehog, and what an impression it made. Magical. This? This right here? is how you do a 2D modern style Sonic game. <coughs> Sonic the Hedgehog 4, even though that was also developed by Dimps, but let's not talk about that. I got a whole video where I do talk about that if you want to talk about that, but let's not talk about that right now. Among all of the handheld Sonic games, this title easily holds the crown for the one that Sonic fans want to be brought back the most in terms of the portable games lineup. To say this Sonic sub-series is beloved is saying that the sky is blue. Except when it's not. Or that Knuckles is red. Except when he's also not. Okay, bad comparisons. But people love these games. As do I. 
fast, fluid, and overall really impressive for what was a very early game in the GBA's lifespan that only got better with each installment. Now there is sort of a Goku vs Saitama level of heated debate when it comes to which advanced game takes the crown, 2 or 3, and frankly to me, it would have to be the third installment. Though oh, no. I admit that there are elements of the earlier two entries that stick the landing slash are less annoying or apparent than with the third game. Also Saitama easy. Sonic Advance would go on to introduce so many awesome elements into the franchise well before we'd ever see them in the mainline game series. The introduction of a boost, though it would really only fully become the boost-like formula in the sub-series that follow Advance. Tag Team gameplay, which offered so much variety and replayability when going through each of the stages. And some of these stages are arguably some of the most creative stages I've seen in a 2D Sonic game yet. Mini games, special stages that are actually unique and not just the half pipe yet again. Plus it introduced characters such as Cream the Rabbit and Vanilla who the internet took very kindly to. Maybe a bit too much so, placing themselves in the series of Cream going up to Mama Rabbit like Goo Goo Ga Ga, I want, I want milk. Probably tastes like vanilla too. <clears throat> Anyways, we know that this game deserves a remake slash port slash remaster. I'm not the first to say this, and I'm not the last one who's gonna. But what are the chances of it actually happening? You're probably not gonna like the words I'm gonna say next, but before I say them, I like to couple this with the subseries that followed it, as many of the points here also relate to the next quote unquote trilogy of games that Dimps developed for Sega and Nintendo. Sonic Rush. I love these games. It's the dim style of Sonic games perfected in my opinion, and even just working on this video, these games are bringing me back to such a happier, simpler time with its DS level style of 3D models, which actually hold up pretty decently all things considered. I mean, I've seen good 3D for the Nintendo DS, and some very bad 3D too. And if we're talking about 3D on the GBA, Oh Jesus Christ, get it off my f***ing screen. And the music just... Oh! Right there, right on, what you need, wrapped in black. Almost every track in these games is an absolute banger. I mean, mwah, chef's kiss. Like, I don't think you understand how hard this soundtrack hits. Even if you do understand, I don't think you understand. I don't know what sort of holy spirit possessed Hideki Naganuma when he walked into the studio when making this game's OST. Actually, it's Hideki Naganuma of Jet Set Radio fame, so I guess it really shouldn't be a surprise if you've heard his god-level compositions. And if you haven't heard his stuff for Jet Set Radio... What's wrong with you? Even now, he's still doing amazing stuff on games such as Lethal League Blaze. <laughs> and the upcoming, not for legal reasons, Jet Set Radio 3 Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. He is still spreading his work onto multiple different games, producing badass music, and talking about how horny he is on Twitter. And he did not miss with this. But even outside of the music, no offense to Sonic Advance diehards, the Rust games are easily the best handheld Sonic games, period. Plus, like Advance, it introduced new elements and characters that would become namestays such as the Boost formula, Blaze the Cat, which is arguably my favorite female character in the Sonic franchise in terms of games, and the future descendant of Dr. Eggman, aka... Eggman Nigga! I'm sorry. What was that? Eggman nigga! Well, well, one more time, I don't think my ears exactly heard what you were saying. Eggman nigga! 
Mega! Eggman Mega! Eggman Mega! Oh no, they did! Huh. Must be from the waist down. But while the Sonic Advance trilogy and the Rush trilogy, which includes the DS port of Sonic Colors, because let's be real here, it's a Rush game, the inclusion of Wisps doesn't detract from that fact, all worthy of their praise and acclaim, the possibility of these games getting the remaster slash remake play is very low. Yeah, mm, sorry, yeah. No. There are a few reasons why I say this. First off, while these games are not or should not be treated less of a game simply because they were put on handhelds, the possibility of these games getting priority over, say, Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Heroes, Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Generations, hell, even to some extent Sonic Lost World, or pretty much any mainline Sonic game released on consoles, yeah, no. Plus, couple that with the fact that remastering and remaking these games would require a lot more effort than said mainline console games to essentially touch up to make more presentable for modern systems on a display much bigger than 2.9 inches. I don't know, maybe someone out there has a Game & Watch for a TV screen. This doesn't apply as much to Sonic Adventure, but definitely in the case of Sonic Rush. And Sega likes to do a bit more than just simply port a game. Even if they rush the hell out of it, Sonic Colors Ultimate and Origins, I'm looking at you. And talking about Origins... What the f*** am I hearing? I would love to be wrong. Trust me, I would love to come on here and look like an absolute clown. And Sega with a pro gamer move announces a Sonic Advance Trilogy Pack or a Sonic Rush Dual Pack because they wouldn't re-release colors because they already re-released colors. I wonder if they would add in that cool epilepsy and seizure inducing screen feature if they did ultimate the DS version though. But do I think that Sega is actually going to put in all that effort? <laughs> no. Plus, Sega would have to remake the Rush gameplay in a way that accommodates not having two screens with one of them being stylus, touch-based, especially in regards to Rush Adventure, since it had a lot more touchscreen type gameplay included in it. I don't know what else to tell you other than no. Perhaps hell no? Hell to the... <laughs> Oh, oh wow. Oh man, that was quite the sneeze. Oh well, that's getting cut out of the video. Man, that sneeze hit harder than the bullet did to Maria's skull. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry Sato, <laughs> didn't know you were in the room. <laughs> How did you get into my house? Oh well, fine, don't answer my question then. Some ultimate life form you all couldn't stop a single bullet, huh? Anyways, no. Maybe I'm being a bit cynical, but probably not. But that's just how I see it. The only possibility I see of these games returning are through Nintendo Switch Online membership in which it has been heavily rumored for quite some time, to some extent possibly even leaked, that the GBA is coming to the NSO subscription service, but that would only apply to the advanced games and not so much the Rush games. And even if that was the case, get ready to pay even more of a pretty penny for it with Nintendo and their quote-unquote generous pricing models for their lackluster services. Who knows, maybe by the time this video drops, it already happens slash has been announced. 
We're just so down bad and desperate for these classics to come back that we'll take what we can get even if it's just the GBA games. Speaking of the GBA games, I feel like I'm forgetting one. Think, think, think! Ah, that's right. How could I forget? Sonic Pinball Party. Silly me. Yeah, this one's coming back, you guys. Don't worry. You heard about that whole Sega taking the initiative to make more remasters slash remakes? Yeah, this right here, this is it. I can see it now. Sonic Pinball Party DX The Paddle Cut. Let's go! Oh yeah, and uh, Sonic Battle, I, I guess. I won't go too long into talking about this one as I already discussed this game a small bit in my set of Sonic fighting game videos. You should check those out by the way if you haven't. But this game is awesome. Man, the GBA just didn't miss, did it? Sonic Pinball Party especially, like my, my god, A1. Everyone knows I'm the real pinball master here. You must still have that Sonic Boom brain if you think I'm going to let you talk to right in front of me. Do you want to go bro? Oh, we're going. You should think twice before you open your mouth ever again. I've faced harder challenges in Sonic Forces, you know. Oh man, that is a burn. Dude, you just got burned. Burn, dude. Burn. But it's awesome with an asterisk. For me, this dragged on way longer than it needed to. And the gameplay, which started off amazing, became very mindless after a while due to just how everything was so padded out. And the same reasons why I don't think Sonic Rush or Advance will get the remaster slash remake treatment, this one holds just as much true, if not even more so. But most people that I know don't love Battle as much as they do for the gameplay, but specifically the story, with it being a direct continuation of Adventure 2's plot, which points already there, but more specifically a certain character in said plot. Amo the Gizoid, and the beautiful tool becomes a person plotline very reminiscent of that of E102 Gamma of Sonic Adventure. For those of you who don't know this character, do you know Gino of Super Mario RPG fame? You know how fans of that game have been asking for Nintendo to bring him back only to wake up to another Smash game where his only representation is through another Mii costume? Yeah, Emil is the Gino of the Sonic franchise. Not in terms of plot, but in terms of being a character in a spin-off game that only made one big appearance that fans fell in love with, that have been clamored to make a reappearance, but is a character that the respective companies won't ever acknowledge outside of maybe cameos. Yeah, he's Gino alright. Finally, let's close this off with the only PSB game for the Blue Blur, Sonic Rivals 1 and 2. Oh, you best get those emulators out, boys and girls. Don't misunderstand, this game more than Rush and Advance games were my childhood. Rush 1 was the first Sonic game I ever completed, but I'm not going to lie to you here, because <laughs> I would never do that now. Stop the cap! <laughs> Stop the cap right now! And tell you that these games have a chance in the hellhole that Ken Penders resides in of being brought back officially. Whether we like it or not, some games are just unfortunately going to be banished to the Shadow Realm and these games are being sent to the dark endless ether that is Black Doom's asshole. These games are good, especially Rivals 2. 
they're not great, they're not amazing, just fine. But this isn't a matter of quality, but probability. And if we're talking about probability, I need not say any more words. Also, these handheld games had this weird thing with having the villain be the same across the majority of them with Rush, Rush Adventure, Rivals 1 and 2, with it being Eggman ne What did he say? Eggman X, yeah, let, let's call him that instead. Say my name. But that just about covers it for all of the handheld games, GBA and onwards, not including collections of past games and of course things like Sonic Generations, Colors, Lost World, etc. Because why would they do that instead of just the console versions? That would be weird, but Sega is the f king author of doing weird things, so who knows. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if this isn't exactly what you wanted to hear when you clicked on the video. Instead hearing me say how we're definitely going to be getting these games back or not to worry about the possibility of it never happening. But I want to be honest here and this is just what I see as the most likely thing. Except for Sonic Pinball Party of course and Sonic Leapfrog. Shout out to my Leapfrog Leapsters out there. Any day with Sega and the announcement, trust me. Yeah! Yeah! That is all for this video. Hey, hey, hey man, what, 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 what about me? No, you get the f out. Anyways, let me know in the comments below what is your favorite Sonic handheld game and least favorite, and why is that the case? What do you think is the possibility of these games being brought back if you think differently from me? If you had to choose one game, just one, no cheating now, or I'll shadow you silver, to be brought back from the handheld age of Sonic, even if it's from the Game Gear slash Neo Geo era, what would it be? I would love to hear it all, and as always, I have been Blue Stride, thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so as well as that like button if you enjoyed slash do enjoy what I produce. And hopefully, I will see you at another time in another video. But in all the meanwhile, striders and stridettes, don't let your stride die. Bye bye Now with those out of the way, that should be every single 3D slash modern Sonic game taken care of. Well, practically every single one. Well, most of them. Well, even still, I... Well, as I was saying... Listen, I... Okay, that one shouldn't even count. <sighs> Fine. There'll be a part three. And I, for one, am not looking forward to revisiting some of these games. Naganuma Senpai, if you could please play one of your fire beats to help make me feel better about this. Hell yeah! Oh man, you just don't miss, do you? Oh my What are you doing out here? Are you kidding me? Really? You snarky little What's the meaning of all this? Unacceptable. You can't do are you going that. to let it end like this? <laughs> <laughs>